Hi, this is Rob Kelly, and this is yet another PowerPoint uh, audio video for you. Just talking really about another really useful metaphor that I use a lot with my Thrive clients, and that's of the balloons or the balloon. The um, beliefs wall at the beginning of the book, and the one we use in the program, the beliefs wall, is a very useful uh, visual metaphor for showing how a belief is formed, like the smoker's belief, for example. They have all the experiences, don't they? And each experience is a brick in the wall. And then they want to believe it, they need to believe it, is represented by the cement in that wall. Well, that's all very well and good, and it does a great job of describing how beliefs are formed. But it doesn't necessarily show very well how beliefs are maintained, or how beliefs stay the same over a long period of time. For that, I use uh, the simple metaphor of a balloon. Everyone has had um, balloons at their party at some point in their life. If you're a parent, you've probably blown up balloons to keep them for a kid's party. Or if you are not that old, you might remember having balloons at a party when you're a young child. And of course, you're always disappointed because within a couple of days, the balloons always shrivel up and uh, shrink down to next to nothing. And your parents, if they love you enough, might actually attempt to blow them back up again for a couple of days. But sooner or later, of course, they're going to shrivel down and run out of air again and just um, become a little nothing on the living room floor. So, what has this got to do with belief systems? Well, if you think of a belief system as a balloon, and here you see a big, thriving orange balloon. Now, let's just say that that is my belief in ghosts, and my belief in ghosts I've had ever since I was a small child, ever since I, I thought I saw a ghost one night, I've believed it ever since. That's the one experience. It's not as if I've seen a ghost every week of my life. I've seen one once when I was seven years old, and I'm now heading perilously towards 47, and I still believe in ghosts. How can I still believe in ghosts 47 years after? Well, let me tell you what happens. If we'd have just left that balloon alone, or to follow the metaphor through, if I'd seen that ghost and then done nothing more about it or thought nothing more about it, very, very slowly, of course, what would happen is that balloon would shrivel up and my belief would shrivel up to next to nothing. You'd end up with, you know, a few weeks after my uh, sighting, I'd have forgotten all about it. It wouldn't mean anything to me anymore and my belief would have changed and I've forgotten everything about it. A little bit like we sometimes ask our clients whether they, um, I said to my clients, uh, do you mind, I'm going to ask you uh, what might seem like a stupid question. Uh, I'm not being rude, it's a genuine question, but please just answer it. And I say to them, do you still believe in Santa Claus? I think this was a Stevie Chan uh, idea. Do you still believe in Santa Claus? And they look a little bit blankly at you and say, well, of course not. And they say, okay, but at one time you did, didn't you? As a kid, you believed in Santa. Oh, yeah. What age do you think you, you stopped believing? And they usually reply sort of seven, eight, nine, ten. And then they say, why? Why did you stop? It's a great idea, Santa Claus, a lovely idea. And they sort of link back and they think, well, they usually say, oh, Jimmy at school said it wasn't real. And, and I saw my dad leaving the pie out one day for Santa. And then I realised we didn't even have a chimney. So how could Santa come down the chimney? Then I asked my parents and they they agreed that they'd been colluding with me and therefore it wasn't real. And what would happen is their belief about Santa would go from that to that to that and they'd go on in their life and forget all about it and never create that belief again. So how can someone think they've seen a ghost as a child and yet 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 or, or 50, 60 years later, that balloon is still as big? Why hasn't that balloon shrunk down to next to nothing? Well, the answer is obvious, as you know. Someone is putting air into that balloon. To maintain a belief, you have to be putting air into that balloon on a regular basis. To keep that balloon fully blown up, you have to be putting air into it. So stick to our metaphor of a person with a belief in ghosts, for example and let's say that's me, I have to have thought, I have to have had very pro-belief thoughts numerous times over the years to keep that balloon inflated. To maintain my belief in ghosts, I have to have had lots of pro-ghost type thoughts 
over the years. So maybe every time someone told a story about ghosts, I thought to myself, hmm, yeah, that's real, that's true, that happened. Which is me like, <sighs> putting a blow of air back into my balloon. Every time you saw something on telly and you agreed with it or you colluded with it, it's like, <sighs> blowing another um, lung full of air into a balloon, keeping this thing afloat. Every time people talked about it, every time you saw a film, every time you saw a horror film, all of these occasions serve the purpose of you blowing another lung full of air into this balloon keeping it inflated. You have to actively have pro-belief thoughts to keep that belief alive. You have to keep blowing air into those balloons to keep them inflated. They will, the balloons will shrivel up if you leave them alone. A belief will shrivel up if you leave it alone. We used to think that once you've got a belief it kind of stayed, but if you think about it, particularly a belief that isn't supported by evidence you see every day, and a belief in ghosts is, is, is an obvious one. Um, you know, even people that believe they've seen a ghost, you very rarely meet someone who thinks they've seen more than one. So they've seen one ghost in their entire life, and yet they still believe it really, really strongly. They have to have had hundreds and hundreds of pro-belief thoughts, hundreds and hundreds of bricks, if you like, in their belief wall, to keep that wall big, to keep their belief big. If they just left that balloon the hell alone, if they just stopped thinking about that belief in a very positive way or a very propagating way, that belief would just shrivel up. That's why people that, that uh, are brought up in religious families and perhaps believe in God as a high school child, as, as a school kid, carry on believing where they stop believing in Santa because the parents stop colluding, but they carry on believing in God because the parents still keep blowing air into their balloon. They send them to Sunday school every week. They say prayers at school. They sing songs of praise every day at school. All of these things serve to maintain a belief. So the moment we stop blowing air into that balloon, the moment we stop having pro-belief thoughts and challenge that belief, that balloon's going to shrivel up. Now, this is a really good metaphor for why the client has to actively get involved in the process of challenging beliefs and recognising. So a lot of the time they say, oh, I'm not doing, I, I believe it, I'm not doing anything. It's just a belief, it's just there, it's just what I do. Not true. Not true. You have to put in effort to maintain a belief that flies in the face of evidence and evidence is all around us. So for someone to maintain a belief in God, they need to be actively doing something because of course all the evidence around you suggests that it's nonsense. For someone to believe in witchcraft or someone to believe in fate or luck or chance or to believe that their past is significant even, they have to actively be investing in that belief. They have to actively have thoughts and emotions about their past in order to maintain that belief that their past is significant. The moment they stop investing in that belief, the belief will shrivel up to the little balloon and will become meaningless and that person can move on with their life. I hope this has been helpful.